Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the narrative lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. And I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And this is the podcast for September 25th, 2022. Uh, and the text is Genesis 39, 1 through 23. So um, the theme of covenants is uh, important. These first five weeks of the narrative lectionary this year, we had the, the, the Noah covenant, God promising, committing God's self to the world. And there's a sign, the rainbow. And then the next covenant, um, we didn't actually have the covenantal text, but the covenant with Abraham, the next major covenant in the Bible. For the record, the, uh, the sign of that covenant is circumcision, God, pro God promising to be present and commit God's self to uh, Abraham and Sarah. That first generation, the question is, would they have a child? I mean, would the promise of descendants even last one generation? Then which child, the next generation, Jacob or Esau? And now you got too many sons. Uh, in, and so it's not in the reading, but you're going to have to tell, the preacher's going to have to help people the story. Joseph is born. Um, you know, he's one of the 12 sons and there's daughters too. Uh, and, uh, but the old man favors Joseph and God apparently favors Joseph because God gives Joseph dreams and the ability to interpret the messages God sends through dreams. And so the brothers decide they've had enough of Joseph and they sell him to, uh, they sell him to slavers who take him to Egypt and he is sold to, um, Potiphar, who was an officer, uh, in the Egyptian army. And that's where chapter, then there's a break and we get the very meaningful story of Tamar. Uh, and then Genesis 39, first Joseph and Potiphar's household. Um, and then Joseph is sent to prison. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's a well-known story, uh, though I don't know if this figures too much in Sunday school lessons anymore. It's, it's a little bit, PG-13 rated, I suppose, uh, as many biblical stories are. But I, I just wanted to note one thing. When Joseph goes down or is sold into Egypt, he goes down to Egypt. Um, my, my friend Joel Kaminsky, who's a Hebrew Bible uh, scholar who uh, happens to be Jewish, he, uh, he, he said this, and it, it was kind of an aha moment for me, that when we think of Egypt now, of course, we think of the uh, the Sphinx and we think of the pyramids and uh, and that's what Egypt was known for in the ancient world as well. Both these, you know, incredible monuments, but also their their um, their fascination with the world of the dead. Right? I mean, all of these monuments are about the dead. Uh, the 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 um, pyramids are tombs for the kings, right, to go into the next life. And so Joseph is being sold, you know, away from his family, away from his homeland. He goes down to Egypt, down to the land of the dead, mm. right? Like you can't get any deader than that. Than what Joseph, yeah. he's, he's, you know, first thrown into a literal pit that he's brought up out of that. Then he goes down into an even lower pit, you could, you could say, uh, to the land of the dead. And the brothers, uh, instead, it might as well have killed him, uh, you know according to the the logic of of what happens to him uh, because they don't expect him to survive right he's he's the lowest of the low he's a slave in the land of the dead and yet uh we see at the beginning of chapter uh 39 that this promise to abraham kind of redounds to his uh great grandson joseph uh, in verse three, it says, his, uh, Potiphar, his master, saw that the Lord was with him, or sorry, verse two, the Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So this promise to Abraham that I will bless those who bless you, that that uh, that that he would, that Abraham and his family would be a blessing uh, kind of works itself out in the life of Joseph. Of course, at the end of the story, Joseph becomes a blessing, not just to Potiphar, not just to Egypt, but to the whole known world, right? By uh, uh, saving uh, all Egypt and all the nations around from famine. Uh, but here we see kind of a foretaste of that, that the Lord is with Joseph. 
even in the land of the dead, right? Even in uh, these terrible circumstances where he's a slave uh, in Egypt. Yeah, and if, if you go to the next verse, uh, after what you just read, it says, Joseph found favor in his sight. Um, that is the Lord's sight. So that's the exact same phrase that we had with Noah two weeks ago. Um, I suppose it might be um, slightly ambiguous, but uh, that it could be Potiphar, but it, the immediate antecedent is, um, well, it might be Potiphar, it might be the Lord. What do you think, Catherine? I, I've always read it as uh, the, the Potiphar, right? Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. Yeah, you're right. But That's what it is. There could be some ambiguity there. Yeah. No, I think, th but the the resonance between the two stories, though, is clearly intentional. Yeah. Um, that, that you um, and here here we have an early element of the theology of the cross that we're going to find in the New Testament. Um, that the theology the cross teaches us to expect that, that God's God shows up with God's grace at the worst times. Uh, the cross is the ultimate sign of human rejection of God, but also then of God's commitment and presence with the creation, in the creation. And here, twice, first sold as a slave and sent to a foreign land. And then second, when false witness is born against him by Potiphar's wife, um, I think people know that story. Uh, I'll say a word about it, but then he's sold to prison. And again, the Lord's with him. So God's presence, keeping the covenant uh, that God made with his great grandparents, you're right. It, I mean, it's, it's in times of suffering. Yeah, yeah. And just to note where that, that detail is, right? He's So he's a slave in the land of the dead, and then it gets even worse. He's... Yeah. He, 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 is sent to prison in the land of the dead. And, but again, it says in verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love chesed uh, in Hebrew. Uh, he gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. And the same thing happens to Joseph in prison as in Potiphar's house. Uh, the chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care. Uh, he committed to Joseph's care, all the prisoners because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. So. Uh, Joseph's um, Joseph's journey. I uh, when I teach this story, I taught I, I try to diagram it on the board. Right, he's he starts out as the favorite of his father, as you said, and then he's 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 put in the pit, and then he's put even uh, then he's lifted up out of the pit and sent to Egypt to slavery. He rises to the top of Potiphar's household. He's sent to prison. Uh, and then finally he rises to, to be second in command in all of Egypt. So it's this kind of up and down motion uh, of, of uh, Joseph's, Joseph's life is this up and down kind of hills and valleys. Uh, but the valleys are pretty deep and it's noteworthy, uh, as you said, that it's in the valleys, it's in the pits uh, where the Lord is manifest, where the Lord is, uh, is present with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph and, uh, and lifts him up even in the darkest times. Of course, the Lord is with Joseph all the time, but uh, but it's at these really darkest moments where the text says the Lord was with him. You know, that's been true in my life, and it's been true in the lives of so many people I know. Uh, either I've been their pastor or I've been their friend and colleague, that it's in these the worst moments. Um, every pastor I know has had the experience multiple times of just being really kind of what am I going to say in this deathbed room, in this room where there's somebody dead? And then you leave and you go, they ministered to me. And well, that's because God is there ahead of us. We don't bring God. God's already there with people in their lowest moments. And sometimes, um, like Joseph later was able to look back and, and um, when Joseph later says, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. The word intended is maybe not a great translation, but the, it doesn't, for, this is not, this is, does not uh, justify the brother's actions or Potiphar's wife actions or the actions in prison of those who then forgot their promises to Joseph. It's, um, but God is able to undo um, 
human intentions uh, and bend them towards God's gracious purposes, which is, there's a great Jim Lindbergh in uh, his book, um, Old Stories for a New Time. I think it, it has a chapter in this story. And uh, there's, um, I think, I think it, something like this, uh, that there's a song about God's purposes in one of the old uh, Presbyterian or Reformed hymn book, May God is working his purpose out or something. And then the, um, the, the, the measure, the, the meter, I'm sorry, of the hymn is it's, it's not like 8484 or 8686, it's rather irregular. So uh, it says the name of the tune, and then it says irregular. God is working his purposes out irregular, something like that. And that's what we find here in the Joseph story. Yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose we, we can't leave this story without saying a word about Mrs. Potiphar. Um, I would just say, <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know what feminist scholars say about Mrs. Potiphar, but um, she, she's, um, she's not a victim here. I guess I'll just put it that way. She, you know, I think some interpreters of scripture would um, understandably have a, 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 apt, a, what, a, a tendency to read female characters sympathetically. Um, but this, this one shouldn't be read sympathetically, I don't think. I'll just put it that way. Uh, she, <laughs> She lies. She lies about Joseph. And it may be that her husband realized, realizes she's lying because, um, you know, the normal reaction if, if Joseph actually had attacked her would be to kill him. He's just a slave. Uh, but instead, the uh, Potiphar throws him into prison. Uh, uh, yeah, I would point, point people to Elna Solvang's commentary on the website. Uh, where uh, that's dealt with. And also just this, the, the, the chapter 38 story, we've just had Tamar, a strong woman character, um, use her sexuality to rescue herself. And uh, she's declared righteous. And then, then you have, you know, Potiphar's wife, a different, a different case. Um, that's, that's a helpful point, uh, Catherine, but sum up, uh, sum up the good news here in a sentence. <laughs> Uh, well, it may be more than one sentence, but yeah, I think the good news is, as you said, it's a theology of the cross, that God is with uh, Joseph, God is with us, even in the darkest times, even in the lowest times, even in the pit, uh, and that God will work God's good purposes out, uh, despite uh, human sin, uh, and that God will bring life uh, out of the, the, out of the places of death. <laughs> God will bring life uh, out of death.